one time. I yeah. will admit, I have flooded a hotel. Like, serious. So there was a valve leaking quite badly and starting to flood the hotel. Isolated all of the valves in the main plant room and that plant room. Mm. There were some really old ropey valves as well. And they do, these do let by. You've got like... Date valves. Three, yeah. Three, yeah poxy <laughs> three, things. Three, like three like yeah. This, yeah. <laughs> like a big old wheel. Yeah. And then, uh, and even like the butterfly valves, they sometimes don't yeah. fully close. Mm. And all of their valves were really old. This thing's like proper going for it like dripping it has to be changed mm. and then um the lady that i met at the construction awards so yeah. she's brought a bus and she's done it up and she's going to be driving to schools to get children into construction oh brilliant um, you get masses of dropouts from university so kids that are more driven to skills and trades i think it's great to have this bus turn up so wherever work take me so i do a lot of traveling now so i'm a single mum but i have week on week off have them for a week and then don't have them for a week so the week that i don't have the kids i'll do stay aways work longer hours mm. then the week i have the kids is more flexible i'll Welcome to Off The Job. Uh, we have a very special guest. We know it's saying special Common guest. words, you're not Tom special because he says it to everyone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was trying to make her feel special. <laughs> I just said you're not special. Yeah, I didn't did mean that. That's <laughs> nice, that's right. <laughs> Welcoming. That come that out wrong. <laughs> We've got B West Gas Chick, Rebecca Weston. Weston? Yeah. Yeah. She's uh, come to join us today from Swindon. Mm. Yeah. She's from sunny Swindon. I remember going to Swindon when I was a kid. Went to see some auntie I'd never met before. Weird. With Why like, did you go meet your auntie you never met? Because like my American my American my American auntie was over from America with her son and they decided to drive to Swindon to see great aunt Patsy who she hadn't seen for a long time. And I just remember going to Swindon for that reason. I was like, Oh what I'm doing here. I just found out you have a bit of a crazy roundabout as well. The crazy roundabout, yeah. Yeah, yeah the magic roundabout. Yeah. <laughs> I went there the other week. Not the other week, last year. Well, feels like last week. When I worked for ECA Boilers, we went for a break down there, right, in Swindon. And this is out, like, no offence to the people in Swindon, right, Bex, right? We went there and they said, um, boiler's not working. I was like, there's nothing wrong with that boiler. I serviced it, like, two weeks ago. Right, I went there and serviced it. There's nothing wrong with it, nothing wrong with it. Oh, we're still doing so, it's not doing it. And I said, is, is is everything all right there down there? Have you got gas? Yeah, we got gas. Anyway, drives down there. The whole road, yellow chevrons everywhere. The whole road <laughs> is up. The whole the whole road, gas bald everywhere. <laughs> like, all right. And I went in and I went, um, you got no gas in you? He went, well, I should have. The shopkeeper downstairs has. I went... Why are you asking the shopkeeper? Why don't you ask the gas men outside here <laughs> if you've got gas in your flat and not the shopkeeper? How far did you drive? Swindon, how far is that? Yeah, it's like two and a half hours. Two and a half That's hours. That's a long way in it. <laughs> yeah. You should I didn't get to take photos I didn't, of the road. I, what, I didn't even walk in the property. It's like, you got no gas. All right? I, I didn't even give him that. I didn't even give him that. I was like, I'm not coming in. I said, you got no gas. I can tell. As soon as I walk, drive on the road, I was like, there ain't no gas here. That's why I ain't going to no fucking... Boiler ain't working. Bex is like, I ain't even had to speak yet. Yeah, yeah love it. <laughs> but but yeah. Anyway, you do you work around Swindon? Not really. I'm mostly working in around London. Um, wherever work take me, so I do a lot of travelling now. Oh um, yeah, you was telling yeah, us the other Wales, week, weren't you? I'm off to Scotland next week. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, do How do you find week? working away? I don't mind it because I do. So I'm a single mum, but I have week on week off, mm. which is what I agreed with the kids dads mm. um have them for a week and then don't have them for a week so the week that i don't have the kids i'll do stay aways mm. like work longer hours mm. do on call out of hours make up that money and then the week i have the kids is more flexible i'll leave leave at about 7 30 get to site 10 ish and then leave at about two three you want to be out of london by two three yeah anyway, as you know and then i get back about half five pick the kids up that's it's it. good they give you that flexibility but that's yeah. a long way to drive for the day to london i get paid from the moment i leave my house yeah. to the moment i get home so you, do you work you for get a company used to it. yeah so mm. i know a lot of people that on socials they work for themselves whereas mm. working for a company I couldn't work for myself. Like, I value my time too much. I don't want to be sat invoicing at night mm, doing yeah. 
long hours and quoting for jobs and then not getting those jobs. That's time wasted chatting mm. to someone for mm. an hour to try and get a job that you don't get it. Yeah. Um, I'd rather have time with my kids or, you know, doing girly things at home in the evening because yeah. well, I'm a gas engineer, I'm still girly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. You know, all my invoices, taxes, everything's all paid for. Um, I get a van, a nice van, mm. um, fuel's paid for. Um, it kind of probably works out not like, far Yeah, off, yeah. It's off. hard on your own because people yeah. think they're earning money, but they're not when you break it down. Mm. Yeah. There's not much in it. And obviously, what would you put on the price of spending time with your kids? Yeah, yeah. Um, would you would you go for an employer where you get, you know, sick pay, time off, holiday allowance, where you get to spend more time? Or would you want to spend the evening kind of giving your kids an iPad and just mm. doing invoicing all night long until... You know. Yeah, you can switch straight off when you get back. Yeah, you don't got to worry yeah, about anything. turn the phone off, that's it. How many kids you got? I've got three. Three, I've got yeah, three. Yeah, I've got you had 12 yeah. the weekend. Yeah, I know. Wow. <laughs> he took 12 kids out. What, on your own for a party? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he oh, went ice skating them for food. Yeah. How, how old, roughly, was the age of kids? 10, oh. 11, one of them. So, oh. like, year six when they're in that, yep. that big boot stage before they go mm. off to secondary school. <laughs> yep. Imagine yeah. taking 12, 12 of them out. It didn't dawn on me until the morning. I just said that. It didn't dawn on me until the morning, the actual responsibility that I had to have that day. I was like, oh. You thought about it after, <laughs> not while you was doing yeah. it. No, yeah. You do a risk assessment for that, like yeah. ice yeah. skating with Yeah, that's it. Because you're thinking broken arms and stuff. And like, oh, <laughs> Blame no. to the throat. Yeah. Like. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's, it's a big responsibility. I did get me skates on for 10 minutes. I thought, I'm going to have a little burn out there. Mm. You'd have a burn out there, um, but it was all good. All ended up. No one, no kid got hurt or injured, so we're all good. It's stressful though, isn't it? Kids' birthday parties. Mm. I did one once, and the kid, one of the kids, ate a glow stick. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god! Like, you, you know, you need to we'll worry go, about that. Yeah, we'll go to Laser Quest. It'll be fun. Don't worry, I'll have thirty. I'll have the whole class. Yeah. You can go off on your own. Mm. Parents, they all went off, and then I'm there with thirty kids. One ate a glow stick in the corner. This one's crying because the pack's too heavy. I'm like, oh my god, what if I die? Yeah. <laughs> Never again. Yeah, have yeah, I done yeah, a party? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. It's How? Just... Yeah. How was it growing up in Swindon? Did you always know you wanted to do a trade, or you just? So my dad it. was a mechanic, so mm. I would tinker from cars, like, from a young age. Um, obviously, sisters, they're um, kind of like the girls, and then I was, like, the boy of the family. You're the middle child. Yeah. 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 The problematic middle child syndrome, that's mm. what they say. How did you guess it? that? <laughs> you kind of give a vibe when you're a middle child, don't yeah, you? You do. You know, although my middle child, she's very girly. She's like, but she is the, um, she's the one who's a bit different at the moment from the other two. <laughs> <laughs> so she's always the middle child then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never was like that. But when, I think when you come go to secondary school, I think it then changes. Yeah. Mm. I think it all changes when the kids go to secondary school. Yeah. But, um, no, still. Uh, so did you go into mechanics to start off with or? No, I kind of just... I wasn't very good at school, so I went to, like, pre-16, which is mm. where you go to school, like, college before you're meant to go to yeah. college. Um, and I had to do, like, several courses. I did, like, hair and beauty and plumbing and heating, mm. and then I had to do, like, my maths, English, science. Um, I wasn't very good at the hair and beauty because my parents weren't, you know well-off parents all the girls mm. on the course had rich mobbies and daddies mm. that you know bought them all the nice stuff and i worked at domino's pizza at 15 years mm. old and all my money from domino's pizza went on my course subsidies mm. so i would have to pay for my own stuff and they'd be like i can't believe she's using those scissors and mm. i just dropped out of the course i couldn't be asked with mm. yeah. the bitchiness of the girls God, the girls are bitches they are they are bitches girls I'm stuck are with bitches uh, so where's the middle one as well yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stuck with the plumbing and uh really loved it like i thought i'm actually good at this messing around with water mm. stuff and mm. then uh stuck at it had a really good tutor and then I uh, went and progressed to my level three. And then I got an apprenticeship to social housing and did a fair few years of social housing. Saw everything mm. <laughs> in social housing. It's good to experience a lot in it, social housing. Yeah, mm. it opens your eyes up. But yeah. it's, it's a good training ground because mm. when you're learning to be a breakdown engineer, you've got kind of 
monopoly money if you think of it like yeah. you learn to fix the boilers properly what parts you actually mm. need but you notice in social housing a lot of people they'll just order everything because they can order everything and replace everything oh, inside the boiler yeah quite, so you're not quite actually prop i suppose you still no. learn that way but yeah and then you learn what it actually is <laughs> trial and error isn't it yeah yeah i suppose you can have every part on your yeah, you have everything thing. on the van. If you don't change it, who cares? You just change another part. Yeah, like, it literally... I wish I had that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I wish I had as well. It's Not like, have uh, all the parts on there, but be able to... Put in as many parts like, as we you couldn't want. just charge... Yeah, I had, that, I had that problem at the weekend. I had that problem, like, yesterday, where I just wish... I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure it's the boiler pump that is knackered. Do you know what I mean? But I can't... I can't. I couldn't do a resistance test across it for whatever reason, and I think if I just had a pump face, I'd just be able to put a pump in yeah. and then just prove it straight away that it's the pump. But I can't liven the pump up out of the boiler. And I know, I know that it's the, I know that it is the pump. I know, I'm pretty sure it's the pump. I hope it's the pump. I hope it ain't a blocked heat exchange or something. <laughs> it's a brand new installation. But the I'm thing is, sure. you could keep a stock on the van and. You can, Even if yeah. you put it on and it's not that, you could take it off and keep it in your van. Yeah. You can still use that, although it's not brand new, but you can yeah, still no, sell it because it hasn't been used. So built, I suppose you can still... Depending what you want to do in it, like because like I've always said this about being like a, a general plumber. If you're like, I don't know everything. I'm not a, I'm not a great engineer, a boiler breakdown engineer. I'm not a great one. I, I, I muddle myself through all the time. And, and I get away with it most of the time. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm still learning. Because I don't do it all, every day. I'm general plumber, heating, um, fitter, boiler installation, or, or just like general like odds and bobs like within mm. the plumbing industry, changing taps. La la la. I'm not. I'm not one of them people who sells himself as a breakdown engineer. I mean, I can do it. I can go to. I'm just a general plumber. Do you know what I mean? So I don't carry everything. I'm not boiler. I'm not boiler minded to like saying I'm gonna. I'm gonna carry everything I need for doing valence. Blah blah. I'm just not that way inclined. I should do if I wanted to. I could, but I just I just don't. <laughs> it's because my business don't require it because it's not full on breakdown. You know what I mean? So that's why. What um? What did you learn in the social housing then? Yeah. A lot, a lot about, you know, you, you're not just an engineer, you have to be like a social worker, you have to be like all sorts of different people, uh, sometimes you have to be an ear to cry on, you go to people and they don't see anybody else all day, yeah. the elderly people, and they'll try and keep you for ages talking and about all mm. sorts of stuff, or you see some sad things, you know, mm. like you see some animal cruelty, child neglect, you also see a lot of drunks where, you know, the police have smashed in their door and boarded it up. So you're climbing in and out their window to do a gas. Yeah. I've, been, I've been in some bad places, but not social housing where it's probably you see a lot, didn't you? Yeah. Um, obviously, I progressed from that. I had a really good engineer. He took me to the side and he was a ninja breakdown engineer. And he would take me to the boilers and be like, right. We've got a back CATE. Tell me it's most common fault. Right, what else? I'd be like, right, it leaks from there, it leaks from there. The diverter valve, if you get a pinhole leak, it will spring out there. How would you change that? I would change it like this, make sure I'm fully holding the valve so it doesn't spring across. He's like, well done, what else would you do? And he would teach me like that. And Hang on, can I get my yeah. book this down? <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh, definitely thanks to him. He, mm. he directed me in the breakdown path and he took me and taught me all these different boilers. Then I left social housing because um, I wanted to go into the commercial and I went to a little company called Austin's. They sadly don't exist anymore. The The owner was pretty old and mm. he just mm. dissolved the business. Um, but I learned a lot from the other engineers there, did all my commercial, trained up. Um, but obviously that's the private sector. Yeah. So when you turn up to a customer's house, you diagnose it and you diagnose it right because they don't want to have to pay no, for it. another yeah. part. You know, it's it's that change to that environment. And then obviously progressed from there to like a commercial only company doing like the pipe fit and mm. the big stuff, the burners. Mm. And I just love the burners. Big boy shit, yeah. innit? Mm. Yeah, I love the flame, like the sound of them. Like I just love that power. When you're working with megawatts, it's like, you know, and you're fixing big buildings and yeah. you think, yeah, I did that. Mm. Not um, a silly little 15 mil gas pipe. Oh, right. yeah. oh, right. oh, right. What made you go into oh, commercial in the start? Um, 
kind of like that everyone's got this stigma about commercial that you know all big and scary or mm. dirty yeah it's a little bit dirty like the plant rooms mm. but you go to some plant rooms and they're immaculate like mm. beautiful some people mm. really look after them um i just preferred it um obviously they get sent a risk assessment before i turn up at the job they're fully aware a female was coming they get a list of all your qualifications they know you're qualified you're a female they know what to expect whereas back in the day in domestic you turn up to someone's oh it's a woman yeah, you know? you just, mm. yeah it, it's kind just of gonna like get a different response every yeah. time aren't you and you get watchers they're watching you constantly you sure you know what you're doing <laughs> like mm, yeah. constantly watching you um and they just you know men will walk in get left to it women we do get watched more by yeah. customers and obviously you've had females on before that have said the same mm. as well whereas in commercial i turn up they're like right there you go there's the keys and leave me to it and i'm in the plant room and i get stuck mm. in you don't really get as many watchers sometimes you get like the people that sit in the boiler houses like the maintenance men they'll come and have a little nosy oh it's a woman like mm. but pretty much get left to it and um the company i work for now they're so great like i get to do some seriously big cool stuff like yeah. some of the biggest stuff in the uk so i love working for them and they're great with my social media as well like mm. they they encourage it companies before didn't really like me you know being on social media i'm quite strict like i don't post locations clients anything like mm. that like you can't because you mm. know your gdpr um but the company i work for now they they love it they're like yeah you can take a video in a plant room make some content show our stuff like they really mm. enjoy it which is nice because the employer before was uh you need to delete that <laughs> mm. and i thought that's a great video it's had yeah. a really good response and then they would be like delete that delete that delete this and it was kind of like being criticized for the content that I was making the thing is though like you'd think though the company would think to themselves well she's putting it on social media so she must be good at what she does we should it should instill a bit of confidence in them as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, do you know what I mean? Because it's like you ain't messing around. Like it's like yeah. it's like big, like you say, yeah. big stuff, important stuff. So you can't be shown on social media just winging it on that stuff. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like so, you'd think that they'd be all for it. And it sounds like the company that you work for now are so. What sort of commercial buildings do you work in? Do you work in like large houses or is it mainly like, I don't know, schools and office S blocks? and Schools, offices, hotels, mm. most of the skyscrapers. The skyscrapers. Mm. Yeah, the skyscrapers in London, like mm. big, big ones. Canary um, Wharf. I can't really name any of them. Oh, she can't the, name them? Yeah, I can't, I can't name You're not name allowed to name them. them? No, I'm not allowed to name name the clients, but there's some some big clients some well-known clients uh some very well-known buildings that i get to go in and uh mm. keep up and run in a lot of hospitals as well in and around london yeah um but yeah and then when people kind of go oh are you here i'm like no comment because <laughs> mm. i can't obviously be like yep this is where i am because you know if the client sees or, right you know they might not be completely happy with it do they not want people saying okay who's working there yeah I was trying to think, yeah, why wouldn't you be allowed to say it? But maybe it's the client. That's confidentiality, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's the confidentiality. Yeah. But as long as they can just see the boiler and me and that's it or what I'm working on, because it's quite unique. Like, you don't, there's not very many commercial engineers posting content no. online at all. And it's more showcasing what commercial is. It's not big and scary. Um, the different things that you can do, like the things that you get to see in commercial. Um, the age range is creeping down a little bit because most people get into commercial in their 40s. Um, so now you're getting a few more in their 20s coming in. Mm. Um, there's still a huge shortage of engineers in general, domestic and commercial. But if you get more into the commercial sector, because there is a real shortage, it'd just be nice and more women because I don't know any mm. women in the uk that do what i do and it's quite a shame you think 2024 coming into 2025 we need a few more women mm. in the industry there's a lot of domestics now but mm. it would be nice to be like go on get into commercial you know yeah, yeah. people start off in domestic and they stick there didn't they yeah to make that jump because you sort of get settled into it don't you if you start working with yourself or working for a company you just get used to that pattern so 
to then change over to commercial or add that, it's yeah, it's I not think. easy, is it? Would you do commercial? Would you do commercial? If you trained me, Bex, I would, <laughs> yeah. If you showed me how to do it, I'd do it. But I'll come like, and work with you one day. But yeah. like, one of these skyscrapers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get a uh, I, I, do you know what? It'd be interesting to do something different, right? And I've worked on some commercial jobs uh, in the past for my mate's company and stuff like that. But... Would you trust them in a commercial? Like you... <laughs> like, no, like you say, it's different oh, though. Yeah. With a house, if the boiler stops working, I'll, it's all right, I'll come later or tomorrow. <laughs> if you shut a school down or an office, well, you can't, it's can a you? lot different. Commercial, yeah. you can't shut like no. places down. That means down. shut it down, but if you make a mistake yeah. and offer you oh, a mistake, yeah. you, you, you you're closed millions. down. You yeah. could be blowing millions for that, that company. You're like, uh, one time, I yeah. will admit, I have flooded a hotel. Um, yeah, like serious the plant no. remote no. yeah so there was a valve leaking quite badly and starting to flood the hotel isolated all of the valves in the main plant room and that plant room mm. there were some really old ropey valves as well oh, and no. they do these do let by you've got like gate valves three yeah, three, yeah poxy <laughs> three, things well, three, like yeah this, yeah like a big old wheel yeah. and then uh and even like the butterfly valves they sometimes don't yeah. fully close mm. and all of their valves were really old. This thing's like proper going for it, like dripping. It has to be changed. Mm. And then um, it literally, I touched it, shot across the room, three bar pressure shooting up. It literally was like, what do you do? And then I thought, oh, it, it will slow down, you know, it will slow down, it will go to the drain and that it did not slow down. And I was thinking, where is this pressure coming for? All these valves I'm looking at, they're like, Sure. isolated they shouldn't be any water coming through like the guy that i'm working with is like what the hell like we literally grabbed the valve and this is hot hot water mm. as well oh, grabbed shit. the valve i went ram sham, like slammed it into the fitting mm. and was like like this is a new bit slammed it into the fitting tried winding it around it is hot like really mm. hot managed to get like a load of towels because it was a hotel mm. and ratchet strapped <laughs> this valve slowly in because against pressure oh, it's, really? it, it's a lot and He's obviously ratchet strapping the valve yeah in. <laughs> ratchet straps around it cranking it so it was slowly pushing it in and then trying to get some stilsons and spin it into place and mate he's just stood there like it's really hot <laughs> they're like soaking wet in this <laughs> hot water like obviously women and men can handle the heat differently yeah. like women will be like oh it's really cold in the winter men will be like nah it's not yeah. and then in the summer like men don't tolerate the heat as well so women we can go in and do hotter things be in hotter environments yeah and tolerate i mean that. you go you go for it don't you yeah you go but, for it on a regular basis like, yeah so yeah. i called my boss and was like we need a few more people here like now and then uh they turned up and um yeah we we found that like the isolations weren't working and we just had to do it live and then when uh we finally did it and it was all done and we took it in turns to get this valve screwed back in we obviously said you need to change all your isolation valves because like you mm. could have a major incident here mm. and you have to drain the whole hotel um, we come out of the plant room and walk down the stairs because it was like a up section. We just mm. saw the roofs like leaking. It's raining in the corridor of oh, the hotel. Oh, really? And it was like, oh. So the plant room weren't like in the basement or anything? No, there was like separate different okay. plant rooms. So yeah. There was a main one in a basement and then further down like in the posh area of the hotel, there was like one up some stairs mm. and that was the plant room that issues and it was raining and it was like, oh. no. So we do make mistakes in the industry. These you things know. happen, don't they? Yeah, no one's no one's perfect. You've got to admit, yeah, I make mm. mistakes sometimes. Like, it's all part of yeah, learning. You, I like that you made a mistake though. No, it's, it's the thing is, should have literally tapped it and it shot out but yeah. i should have like waited until there was no dripping at all like yeah, yeah. there was no drain offs on any of this pipe work so we couldn't even drain off to test it so it was kind of just one of them jobs you turn up to which becomes a crap job like mm. you must have had ones like that where you go to a job and it looks all simple and you start taking things apart and you're like oh my word what is, goes why wrong. did i take this job on yeah. um that's the, yeah. that is the industry, I'm afraid. Yeah. Do you do many installs or is it mainly like repairs and stuff? I help out and do a few yeah. installs and that. Obviously, I'm training up on the electrics at the mm. moment. So I'm going to be an official electrician as well soon. Mm. So I do the BMS panels. So yeah, yeah, because a lot of them buildings yeah. have BMS, don't they? Yeah, so it's more the controls around the combustion as well. So anything to do with the heat and equipment, even the BMS, we're now 
we do that as well. So I had to deal with that a little bit. The house I worked in in London, they had because they had like large houses. They had like BMS system. Yeah, they made the houses overcomplicated. Yeah, they probably didn't need it, but um, it, it's the overloads, knowing the overload mm. sizes, making sure that those are right. Um, so people put pump sets in, and if you don't know about the electrics, you don't know if your pump set's actually rated to the right amperage for mm. your overloads and your breakers. So obviously I've been doing a lot of electrical wiring, even from scratch, like learning how to wire up 32-pin plugs and mm. like things that probably Sparky's watching this people ask basic mm. you know but for me like expanding my knowledge like you know you're never too old no. to learn there's something. so much that goes into the commercial the sensors yeah. and like it's a minefield isn't it mm. yeah Just, no, i don't know if i want but to do it Bex, to be honest with money. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to yeah, stop yeah but but Just... the money it's the money the yeah. money is good in commercial like mm. it is mm. good um you think if you could just do domestic or just do commercial I would definitely just do the commercial because I still do a little bit of both. Like I still do the odd domestic, you know. People call me up and like, oh, can you come fix my boiler? And I'm like, oh, I really don't want to go to someone's house and fix their boiler. It's like, mm. you know. It's a pain, isn't it? Yeah. I get calls now and like, I don't want to do it. Why? <laughs> I haven't got any tools. Why don't you give them band. to me then? Huh? Why don't you give them to That's me? There's probably people I know. Yeah, like my mate rang me in a weekend. Like, it's always the mate, isn't it? He had a new line I put down, asked me to silicone around his floor. I was like, mate, that, <laughs> that is, I don't want to be siliconing around your floor. Um, you never, If you've done it, you'll never get away from it. But yeah. it's all right if you help close friends and family out, but you yeah. still don't want to do it. It's all for me because I haven't done it for a couple of years, so it's, it's yeah, I, can't, I haven't got the motivation. I, just don't, I don't want to do it for anyone. Yeah, I don't want to do it for customers. I don't want to do it for anyone. But do you do it for yourself? Or you want it like I find that a lot of engineers like we go and we make everyone else's houses look beautiful. Oh no, all the it's time. terrible. You get to your own house and you're like, oh, I'll do that next week. Oh, I'll do yeah. that eventually. And your own you house. Is my just... old house, my ex-wife. I mean, there's still bits in there that I didn't finish. You know what I mean? <laughs> still bits unfinished business. When you do it all day, you don't want to do yeah, anything. Exactly. Even the weekend, like right? I just want to chill yeah. out. And everyone is, assumes that because we're engineers, our houses are like immensely beautiful and got all of these gadgets and things going on. Mm. Like, I don't there might be a few out there, you know, that do, but just, you don't have the time. You there. go, you, yeah, you go to a builder's it. house and it is literally a building site, a lot yeah. of it, and it's so much unfinished works and and stuff. What they do in their own house, right? That they wouldn't do on somebody else's house. They'll do something because they know they can get away with it on their yeah. own house. So it looks a right lash up. When people <laughs> say you should, you should do work on somebody's house the way you'd want it done on your own, and I think to myself, you really don't want them people because I've seen what they put in their houses because they just lashed it in because they just want water or electric or they've. Do you know what I mean? A, a, something smashed together, they'll do it because they think it's my house. I'm not really that bothered. So yeah. Um. What do you think then, that can, you said about more women coming into the trade, what do you think that can be done to get more women in the trade? I think it's more publicising it. I think, so I was recently at the Women in Construction Awards and I... You wasn't. <laughs> I didn't even I see the trade. Why? What? What? Oh, <laughs> what is that? I was wondering what that was, Bex. I was, I was um, pretty sure it was Whatever it is, it's armless, isn't it? Yeah, it's armless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this was the trophy that was specially made for me because um, I won the on the tools category. Well done. Yeah. Mm. Applause, you. applause, because that does deserve applause. Yeah. Well, well was done. That, this, I thought it was coming up soon, isn't it, on the tools? Oh, no. So this is design and build. Okay. So design and build. So it's one of uh, Lord Sugar's businesses. Mm. Right. So he went in with Michaela Wayne um, from The Apprentice, mm. and that was the business, design and build, um, okay. which is obviously in the construction company mm. and um, marketing and all sorts. Um, look at their website for a full list. I'm not going to say what they do yeah, and yeah. don't do in case they don't do yeah. it. Um, so the Women in Construction Award um oscar 
<laughs> it's like scantily clad. <laughs> yeah. We don't recommend you turn up to site like that because you'll probably get thrown off. You must be fully dressed with steel <laughs> toe cap. She's not even got any boots on. <laughs> yeah. And looks like she's been in an accident because she's uh, missing an arm. Right. So <laughs> it's not very good for the health and safety awards, this one. It wouldn't it wouldn't stand very well. Probably be yeah. Anyway, but yeah, you won it and yeah. uh, very well done too on that because, I mean, you've had a bit of a torrid time, did not you? Yeah, yeah. I've been through uh, been through the mill for the last year. Um, uh, obviously, I've uh, been fighting cancer yeah. and I've come through the other side. So I'm, they can't say cancer free. You have to wait for five years until they can say cancer free. Mm. Um, they just say no traces, no detectable tumours of yeah, cancer. Yeah. So they call it full remission. Mm. So I'm in full remission and I've been put on the list for reconstructive surgery. Right. So yeah, like, so people don't know yeah. what you had. So what, what is oh, it? Oh, so I had lymphoma cancer, which is, it's a really common cancer, but it's not very well known. Mm. Um, it's non Hodgkinson's. People don't really talk about it very much, but it is one of the most common cancers. And it's basically where it affects your lymph nodes in your body. Mm. So I ended up just having like... Is that the things where the, you get the lumps? And... Yeah, lumps I had in that my under armpit. my armpits once. Yeah. Yeah, but sometimes, yeah you, yeah, you can get that. They'll come up, say, if you've got a cut on your arm, you might get like yeah. that come up because it's, it's acting as a valve. It's yeah. your body's way of doing yeah, plumbing yeah. And, and a non return yeah. valve type sort of thing. So you can get that will come up. But yeah, yeah that will come up though, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah, if you've got so is it. Is that what the or, early symptoms were? Or? Yeah, so I had a lump and then I didn't really think that much of it. I think, oh, I'm getting old a little bit. Mm. Um, and then I was getting really tired. Getting old? How old are you? Um, 34 now. I know I shouldn't ask yeah. a woman that, but let's just do it because, like, yeah. you know, we're 34. You're not getting old, yeah. are you? Yeah. Hey, I'm Aging. old. <laughs> oh, there, oh, look at me. Huh? I'm old. Right, that's He's old. old. Um, but yeah, so I ended up um, finding this lump and I didn't really think much of it. Um, I was getting really tired. I just thought I'm working a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. um, then I was getting, uh, when I was holding my phone, I was struggling with like my fingers. So, I would lose like all the sensation in my fingers, like kind of like numb hands and wouldn't be able to feel them. So I'd be like pinching them and I couldn't right. feel my fingers. And I thought, oh, maybe it's, uh, you know, poor circulation. Mm. And then it started happening up to my arms and then it started happening on my feet and my legs. So when I was sat down in a position, I'd get up, I wouldn't be able to like walk or move. And then I kind of thought, well, okay, maybe that's not really right. That, yeah, yeah. Um, and then... Um, I went and got myself uh, tested at the hospital and they didn't really detect anything. They weren't really, you know, they're so busy in the NHS. Mm. They didn't really look into it, but they did do my scans and they kind of just shrugged me off. Then I ended up really poorly and I was admitted to hospital. This was when we were meant to go on that holiday to... Esby, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're just going, going on a little yeah. bit. Not, not, not like that, we no. No, no, no. We'd no, 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 got asked to go by a yeah. company on something, and uh, I didn't go anyway, yeah, but yeah. I, and I obviously didn't go either, because I then ended up being rushed to hospital, and um, I had an operation um, to remove fluid, excess fluid, that was built mm. up around my heart, which was obviously all along to do with this because mm. obviously the fluid wasn't able to pass through my body properly through the lympha lymphatic mm. node system um and then they took a biopsy there and then it come back that there was signs of cancer mm. um and then obviously they looked into it more and i started to have a few treatments um just like tablets and mm. treatments like that and then i ended up um really poorly and they said, we're going to have to give you a double mastectomy because it's now aggressively spread mm. across your chest. Mm. And um, we don't want it to go up because if it goes up towards your neck and your brain, mm. it's not as curable. You could end mm. up, you know, dead. Yeah. Um, to put it short, mm. like you might not make it. So I was like, I don't really want to lose my boobs because I have these really nice big <laughs> boobs. You know, they have some big boobs. And I, mean, then, I, uh, I mean, I remember them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be I fair, some, I, I, some mean, big, I remember some big oh, boobs. Say so, and say. Um, yeah, so obviously I was like, no, I don't want to lose my boobs. You know. Um, then obviously my sister was like, look, you need to get rid of them. You 
your you and your kids are more health's important, important yeah. health's important you don't need them they're just bits of tissue that do nothing anyway and i was like oh. so i went and had the surgery i was really reluctant I actually arrived my sister took me there and i actually like went in and turned around and went to walk out the door mm. again my sister was there like get back in and uh went went in had the boobs off and i just cried waking up from surgery all i did was cry pretty much wanted to just lock myself away in in my house and never come out again mm. obviously i was seeing found comedy obviously was getting me through so also i was watching a lot of your videos, Pete. Which, oh, don't say you that. Know, he ain't funny, it, though, it, is he? It, yeah, he is. I was watching, <laughs> and obviously Dave White's videos yeah. as well. It was just that, you know, comedy, but relating to plumbing that I can relate to. And it was just a smile on my face, like, you know, just got me through it. And then um, I had the scan where I thought, you know, I'm all good now. I've had my boobs chopped off. Mm. I'm going to be fine. I'll mm. get these boobs back in no time because they said... Once you have them off, you can have reconstructive surgery mm. later on. NHS pay for all of that. So mm. don't worry, it's just a temporary thing. So it's like, okay, okay. And that's why I was like, yeah, I'll have them off. Then they said it spread towards your liver. Uh, and I was literally went into the scan like positive, like, yeah, I'm going to be cured. I'm going to mm. be fine. And then they said, look, actually, you're, Hit you again. you're more ill. Um, mm. If it spreads further. I remember can, when you told me that. Yeah, yeah. We can remove a section of your liver. And I'm thinking... They're literally just taking everything out of me. Yeah, is that the only way to off. cure is by, like, cut it out, basically? They, If it spreads aggressively, they go for the surgical option of just yeah. removing it to minimise mm. it. And then I had the chemo cycles, which really took it out of me, which was a lot. Um, when did this happen? This, like, yeah. start of this year, yeah, start oh, yeah. of this Not year. Not long ago then, no. yeah. No. Um, and then obviously had the cycles of chemo, which is awful. Like, they... You, they tell you what to expect, but you don't expect it. It constantly tastes like you've got a copper penny in your mouth, like you've just right. put a copper mm. penny inside your mouth. You get problems with your hearing and your sight as well. You don't get the hair loss straight away. Like, that's a, a myth. Like, people say, oh, your hair will full out as mm. soon as yeah, you yeah. Know, Like, you walk out and it just drops out. That's not the case. Like, it literally was about a month or so after having it mm. that it started to really, like, come out, like, on the hairbrush and everything, yeah. um, in the shower, just clumps of it. Um, it must and, have been hard to deal with all that. Yeah. So it was one thing lose my boob, then the other thing to like lose my hair and not feel I was me. Yeah. And then obviously it was just a week of me on my own with no kids, no nothing. So it was quite like isolating. I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to see anybody. Um, I kind of like kept myself to myself and kept it quite quiet what mm. I was going through because people do post on social media like, oh, I've got this and got that. But I just kept it really quiet. Um, but one of my friends, he posted about his and the awareness that it raised and the amount of people that then ended up going and finding out, you know, that they had something. Mm. And I thought, I'll do a post about mine, but make it more of like a what I've been through and spot the signs. And a few people did direct message me and they said, oh, I've had all of these and they went and got themselves tested. And sadly they've actually been diagnosed since oh, too. No. Um, but they kind of thought like I did, Oh, maybe I'm just getting old. Yeah. But hopefully they're going to get recovery yeah. because yeah. of what you've put out there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like yeah. you've made, a, you've raised awareness, you've brought yeah. a positive out of what was a negative yeah, which yeah. is the best way to be. Do you know what I mean? And you, you've potentially saved somebody's life. Like, do you know what I mean? Now, let's get her another one for that. <laughs> do you know? No, but do you know what I mean? But it's yeah. that's, it's all about awareness. And do you know what we say about the social media and all that? And and, and I made that comment earlier. I remember them, like, about yeah. your boobs and all that. Because I would like to say this now. You got a bit of a stick for that. Oh, God. You got yeah. A, you, before the people know. Videos. Yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got a bit of stick for that. Uh, and 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 people saying, oh, she's sexualizing whatever. I, yeah. I remember it, right? And um, and but but nobody knew the full story. 
did they? No, literally. And that, go into that, yeah. because it's interesting. It's about judging a book by its cover, this, and I think yeah. it's very relevant to the conversation. So, yeah, go on, carry on. So, I would always be in my workwear, always be in, like, a baggy T-shirt, you know. i do my videos in workwear, and then it was literally one day, and it was a Sunday. I'm not going to get in my workwear on a Sunday to film a video at my, my house. It was a video, basically, I collect hats, like, trade hats. Mm. Like, that's... Everyone collects, like, sort of something in the trade. For me, it's hats. Like, and uh, I had a collection of hats, and it was basically to show off my hat collection that mm. I was proud of, and maybe get a few more hats, you know, mm. like sent to me. Yeah. And uh, so I did a hat video, and I just had like you know a little string top on, and I was sat on the floor, I did my hat video, and because like my boobs were out, people were like Jesus, she's got big boobs. Mm. Like they were really shocked that you know, oh. She's a woman who has boobs. Mm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. we do. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of like part of being a woman. <laughs> and um, yeah, I had so much backlash. I literally like instantly dropped so many following, like oh, really? just posting this video. It was a lot. I had a lot of messages, like comments I was having to delete on the mm. post, um, direct messages. I thought better of you. Um, you are someone I looked up to in this industry. I don't expect to see sort of things like this from you i expect it from other girls and mm. i was really taken back like people were like you're you're a professional this is so out of character and it was like i just made a video with me with some hats joking around and it literally was not about the hats at all it ended up being about the boots yeah. that i mm. had um and then i obviously deleted that video because i had so much abuse from it i deleted mm. it and then i was like you know kept straight to wearing really baggy work tops like mm size up to look even baggier and you know like kept it really professional again and uh yeah didn't didn't go too much into it then so people were like look you need to stop letting that get you down you know people have to know like you can be whatever you want and put whatever you want on your page and then i did a video of like sassy me like alter ego like I don't live in workwear. Here's me in workwear, grafting on site. Here's me out, like, yeah, in my little outfit. because women want to be seen, like, not in a bad way, but they, women want to feel, like, sexy and stuff, but they're yeah. actually worried about showing that because people think yeah. of them different. I think, yeah, but I think as well, though, you, you wanted to, I think, at one point where you did show some, like, of some breasts, yeah, not 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 show your breast, but like obviously show what you. you got, yeah, it's right? like a cleavage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cleavage, like... right? But, yeah. but but because of that, you've done that because you knew the news what was coming to you as well, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, you you already knew yeah. what was what so, was on the what yeah. was going to happen. This was like preparation, so nobody knew. And obviously, I thought, you know what? I'm been told I'm going to lose my boobs. I'm going to take them out. I'm going to take them to the beach in a bikini. I'm going to take them out. I'm going to post and show that you know before they get chopped off, and I've got like two little grandma skins mm. um <laughs> <Yeah>. how, <laughs> not yeah. to sugarcoat it two little grandma skins uh waiting for reconstruction but yeah so it was obviously more showing it before it went because yeah. i was just you know in that state but no one knew because i hadn't told anybody i kept it really quiet so that was kind of like a bit behind it as well yeah i couldn't imagine that initial feeling like when you get told you've got cancer that must have been I mean, well, it's, it's like you've yeah. got, you got three kids as well, haven't you? Do you yeah. know what I mean? That's that's the thing that would be playing on my mind. What runs you know what through mean? your head when you get told? It's kind of like they had to tell me several times because it didn't quite sink in. Mm. And obviously I'd taken my sister with me and she literally was like, do you understand what they're saying to you? And I was like, no. And then they like said it a few more times and it took me a while to process it and i kind of just hid away and i cried like i cried mm. a lot mm. um i don't want to cry now yeah. i just think no, no, about no. it but it was just you know like it was kind of i went into autopilot like a shut off mm. and everyone's world's going around me and i'm just like stopped my world's frozen mm. and i didn't know what i was going to do or anything um you know finances what i'm going to do with my kids you know um you like just never know what's around the corner, do you? Yeah. Um, but obviously, fighting and getting better. And it kind of then spurred me into, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go doing all the things that I've wanted to do mm. and be as qualified as I can be. Yeah. So obviously, it spurred me on to, you know, I'm going to go all in in my career and go 
to the top industrial yeah. let's go for yeah, it would you, you say know? it's changed your mindset about life and oh yeah definitely yeah. like there's so many people social media can be a nasty form mm. you know people post what they want to see but you don't really see what people are going through behind closed doors mm. so someone might post like a happy jokey post but mm. really in reality they could be having a really hard time in life like people you just mask it with that didn't they yeah mm. and you just got to be kind to people and kind of understand mm. you know people could be going through a lot and um yeah social media is bad it's good and bad but yeah for that people don't want to come out and publicize their deepest, darkest fears or what mm. they're going through, you know, whether it's a marriage breakup or, you know, something bad's happened, their, their dad's died or something mm. like that, you know, people kind of hide behind the social media. So it's like you should all be nice to each other. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing as well, and it? it's like um, a, a lot of people get um, misunderstood on it as well. So that the... There's always two ways of looking at something, isn't there? Or maybe yeah. more than t two ways of looking at something. Some people look at it as if, like, you know, it's that it's that old it's that old thing in it, like where people, you, where people take a a, a video of themselves giving money to a homeless person, right? Yeah. Now, what did they do that for? You can look at it two different ways, can't you? You can look at it as that self gratification and look at me, I am a great person, yeah. or you can look at it in a way that now actually. Right, what I'm doing this for is to show other people that they can do it that they too. can do it too. Yeah. There's two ways of looking at things. Yeah. There's there's always two ways of looking at things, and that's the confusing thing with social media. I think yeah. you've always got to have an open mind to it. So don't criticize somebody for doing it. Do you know what I mean? I was I was always one of them people who'd look at things in a bit of a cynical way, but it's not the way to be. You've just got to have an open mind and think. Well, they might be doing it for that, but they also might be doing it for that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then and just yeah. stay. Stay sort of like, try and stay n neutral to it all and just like, yeah, just be open-minded to stuff you see on like, social media, basically. Oh, we'll get back to the rewind to the the lady that I met at the Construction Awards. So yeah. she's brought a bus and she's done it up and she's going to be driving to schools to get children into construction. Oh, brilliant. Because um, obviously mm. schools drive children into, you know, university, mm. which doesn't always work out. Mm. And um, you get masses of dropouts from university and they're kind of like lost souls. But construction, not everyone's good at education they're not academic so kids that are more driven to skills and trades i think it's great to have this bus turn up so i met this lovely lady um obviously at the awards and uh she she said about this bus and i thought that's a great idea you know more of that in the industry yeah, women. Well, get more women in i mean yeah because there, sometimes there's a bit of stigmatism about kids coming like you say that might be the kid who's on, who hasn't done well at school he's going to work on a building so we've had this conversation with the ball builders when they was on there like it, it listen going to work on a site is not like just because you're a dropout or because yeah. you can't get you, you've had you've a bad to be really education. Skilled, yeah, you know. you 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 you, you got to be a clever person to work within the trade industry. You've that, that might you might not be academic, but you still it's have a lot to, to be learn. A clever, yeah. You still have to be a clever person yeah. and skilled to do it and take it on. Because not everybody takes knowledge in the same way. Yeah, a lot of people are visually they they learn things visually as yeah. opposed to like you know writing on paper and taking it in like yeah. that. So there's the little the, the, whole, the way of teaching in schools in my my fault is that it's dated anyway yeah. do you know what yeah. i mean it's really dated old-fashioned classrooms and it's very much like uh, institutionalized isn't yeah. it? do you know what i mean as opposed to if you go out on site you're learning on sites to do everybody says don't they you never learn in college what you're going to learn out on site do yeah you know what i mean because again a college is sort of like a school system right but on site you're actually working with people and you will take more in because it's it's more, it's more interesting. You you could want to be there, don't you? Do you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah, so taking that into the school. Yeah, I brilliant. think yeah, um, tradeswomen should go into schools and speak to them like yeah. just before they're leaving school and stuff to to try and direct them. Yeah, into, yeah. because it's into still it. very much like it's still very much uh, where, where, where uh, ladies on site etc. It's still very like cavemanny out there. Do you know what I mean? Where yeah. people and, and I'm, not, I'm not just saying about the men. I'm saying about the women as well in general as well. Who who if you turn around and I said this the other day, I said if you turn around to ten women out there right who come through the school system and you said that what do you want to do when 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 you grow up? Do you want to work on a building site or do you want to work? I don't know. Maybe 
I don't know, in a hospitality industry or beauty or something like that. I think majority of them say, oh, I'd rather do beauty because yeah. they don't know, they're not educated on what construction is and who's in it. And, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it needs to start from an early age instead of like giving dolls out to kids and stuff like this. Yeah. yeah it, all all, level, all yeah. on the same playing field. You can and that still way, be girly yeah, yeah, in this you industry, can. you know, there's a not a lot of us. And you're girls, proof uh, of that. Yeah. Like, sparkly nails you yeah. know go fix the boiler and then in my job photos i'm there pointing at things like have you got, ever had a nail, nail fall off in a boiler no not inside a boiler but but i do like just keep some glue with me and stick it back on yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get the glue out That's strong stuff that nail glue in it yeah my bird the other week she i think she put a tile back on with nail glue <laughs> She went, I put it on my nail glue. I went, what? <laughs> nail glue? I thought, oh, she must mean no nails. But yeah. I thought that's what she meant, no nails. I went, she went, no, n nail glue. Yeah. I went, what? She went, you didn't use no nails? She went, no, nail glue. And I was like, oh. And now you ain't got no nails left because you've run out of nail glue. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But it's strong old stuff. Yeah. I think a lot of women just don't feel comfortable, do they, to go into the colleges. Is there any, like, women-only colleges or I don't training centres? I Maybe that know. would help, like, get more women into it. Because if yeah. they're around women, you don't want to divide them, but yeah. that first People initial step, that initial step. Well, we met help. Rach uh, um, Baxi, didn't she? She's in the training sector, which is... is that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. for the Baxi boy. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, that's still training, isn't it? Mm. Which but is yeah, good I mean, because you've got a lady training. Would yeah. you ever look into going into training people? Would you ever look into doing that? More hands-on. Yeah, I prefer the <coughs> hands-on yeah. stuff. Like, I think it's going to be a long, long time till I leave the tools because I enjoy it so much. Yeah. But when I do, I might just take, like, a little office role or, you know, maybe even I'll turn up and go to one of these gas training centres and mm. teach the next few generations about gas, be that person that's like, sits their ACSs for yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I don't know. But when my body can't do it anymore, then I'll probably leave the tools. That's so, right, mate. Yeah. I'm going out now. Yeah. It's like, yeah like, like, That's hurting. a good way to look at it, but I'm then hurting. it's like, is it then too late because your body's just knackered and... I am hurting, to be honest with you. I'm hurting just sitting down, to be quite honest with you. Me back to it. If you I, enjoy it, you just want to yeah, keep doing it. I'll, I'll take the curse of the office when I'm when I'm an elderly lady, you know, the yeah. curse of the office where you go from off the tools into an office role and you just eat a lot of biscuits and get quite fat. Yeah. Like, you know what I, I hate mean? biscuits now anyway. <laughs> huh? I eat biscuits now anyway. In your van, you have them in your van. I have them in my van, I have them in here. I love, I love, I love a biscuit. Then you have a biscuit. What's your favourite biscuit? My favourite biscuit would have to be a jammy dodger. Or, I like, think... you know the ones, that, that I tell you, the, the, the foxes ones, which they're like, they've got chocolate in the middle and they're about that they're long. Nice, and yeah. oh. I like the foxes ones with just round with chocolate around it. The... I like all biscuits, even a digestive. You can't beat a digestive or a yeah. hobnob. Yeah. Chocolate, oh, hobnobs, yeah. Oh, I do yeah. packs of them. Hobnobs, <laughs> I do like Pringles, mate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whole packs of them. Like, I'll bring the pack out and my kids will go, Can I, I'll go, no, these are mine. Are you <laughs> the, a white chocolate or a milk chocolate Both. digester? Both. Both? Yeah. Both. Mind you, it's, no, no, milk chocolate. White chocolate don't taste right on the digestive, I don't think. I, I still eat it, don't get me wrong, right? But it doesn't <laughs> Not taste right white chocolate. Oh, right. I like an Oreo. Maybe a milky That's bar. Me. Oreo. Yeah, they're Oreo. nice. I like the yeah. Oreo ice cream, yeah. What do you like, Robbie? What biscuits do you like? Yeah, you look like a digestive chocolate. kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah. Chocolate. Yeah, chocolate obnob. Hey, he looks like a dodger. What about Jaffa cakes? Is that a cake or a biscuit? Now that is burn? right. Now That's what way do you eat? Yeah but, but, yeah, but what way up do you eat them? Oh, you got to eat round the edge and then peel off the orange and eat the jelly last. Nah. See, she's an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Break I mean, it down. Only an engineer would do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's you, it's you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I just, I, I eat them like tablets, to be quite. <laughs> that, that is it. What about you, Karen? What, biscuit? Favourite yeah. biscuit? No, it's a oh, is cake. It, is it a cake How or a biscuit? Yeah. How do you yeah. eat it? It's called a cake. Right. No, I just whack it in my mouth. I won't break it down and get oh. the jelly last. No, I don't do that. But I used to start doing that to custard creams. Yeah. yeah. Eat the biscuit and then just bit scrape, and then it. scrape it off your teeth. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's the only way to eat it. That's the cream, isn't it? Yeah. No, but you do one where it's you eat the whole one, then you do the next one, you eat just that bit and just see what tastes better. Yeah. 
this is an interesting it's conversation. Like, but we eat biscuits yeah. as trades people, though. Do you know what I mean? We like, well, we that's like not a biscuit. Unusual. <laughs> it's like jelly babies as well. You want to take a jelly baby and another jelly baby of two different colours, eat a bit of both, and then stick them together and make no, a new jelly baby. No, see, look, that, that. I've never okay. done that before. No. <laughs> that is a child in you. That, that is right the there. That that is is sat in the van I'm going to do that in. now. But what I like to do with Twix is, is like bite off one end and then bite off the other and, and use it as a straw. Oh, you not done that? No, we got a Twix out the back there. No, no. we're going to get her to do that after with a cup what, of tea. Like just take all the. You, but no, no. You bite one end off the Twix. You bite the other end off the Twix and then you suck the tea oh. through the Twix as a straw. But you. You'll never eat a Twix any differently to that again when you got. And it melts it as me, it goes mouth through. Water in oh. You're encouraging, encouraging eating chocolate. Uh, you you yeah, eat yeah, chocolate. yeah, yeah, and, and fruit and veg. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, fruit and nut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wanted, that's what you want. I'm, I'm going to take it back off the biscuits because it comes to my mind about the NHS thing. Is that's the thing when they're busy? Like you obviously went there because you had the symptoms, and they sort of it's M- not their fault. They didn't yeah. want to. They they're just busy, me off. aren't they? Too so busy, it, yeah. Too unless busy. you're really ill, or is it? or it's an obvious symptom that you've got something bad, they send you away. And the only time people go back is when they're really ill, but sometimes it's too late. Yeah. So, like, I think maybe we need to be responsible. Why are they too busy? Well, that's a whole different conversation. Why are they too busy? Do we want that conversation? (laughs) That's a big conversation. That's would we, political. Would they we only have so many rooms in the hospital, right? Yeah. So would, agree. would we all agree on that, though? What would we so all agree? I blame human beings. They, they go there. They for were silly actually reasons. so busy in the NHS hospital that I had to sit and wait for nearly two days to have treatment, and at which point there still wasn't a bed available for me. Um, so I'd gone home, come back the next day, and they said, oh, like, you're still on the waiting list, but there's still not a bed or a room for you. In the end, they just put up a screen, and I had chemo in the waiting room in front of everyone else. Bloody They're hell. busy because of human beings are causing their They're own busy because issues. there's, number one, there's too many human beings. Right? There's Dr. Google that makes you feel like you're going right. to die there's with Dr. Google, everything. Yeah. Right. And people will turn up to the hospital for things like you say, yeah, human beings, human beings, because... We're, we're creating fucking, our own health we're fucking issues. idiots, yeah. Yeah, we're and we're diagnosing our ourselves. Yeah. yeah, and and you've got you. No offense to mothers, I know like your your baby is like your precious thing to you, but they're turning up to hospital with a kid with a cough. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Stuff like or that. Or you get drunk people that've been out being stupid. Like it's it's a mix of things, isn't it? It's, yeah, yeah, it, 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 but it, it's it's a scary thing because you could be really ill. And you don't get well, taken to that next step to get like well, a scan. And... I've still got. I had my MRI scan, pff, how long ago was that? Four, five weeks ago? Mm. Still ain't had the results. And I've got to physically phone them now to get the results. So I don't know whether I'm, I'm going to just... Do, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if there's anything sinister going on. And yeah. I've got, I'd like to think there isn't, because if there is, then I'd like to think they're going to phone me and say, hang on a minute. Do you know what I mean? But or, or, or have I just been like cast aside and it's got lost somewhere? But yeah. this is the good yeah. thing about social media. It's, it's opening up, like people are learning more about foods and stuff like that. So it might help people having I mean, health issues go down. I mean, we've had a conversation about Twixes and yeah. that's stuff. Yeah. It's great, but, isn't it? But fruit, that's another thing. So <laughs> notice the price of a, a pack of chocolate versus... <laughs> Three pound forty for a little punnet of raspberries or strawberries. Mm. Like fruit is crazy expensive. Yeah. They mm. want us to eat healthy, but it, they're making it hard for yeah. us to eat healthy. Yeah, the cost of food in general is just mm. crazy yeah, at expensive. the moment, isn't it? I mean, you should just eat clean. Let's be yeah. honest, shouldn't it? Let, let's be yeah, honest. That's what it is. Eating clean, rice, eating nice clean, stuff. meat, eggs, spinach, Wait. veg. What was the other stuff you said? Cheese. Oh, couscous. Feta cheese. Couscous? Yeah, a little bit of couscous. Is couscous all right couscous. for you? Yeah. Moroccan couscous? Oh, I don't know. We I love know. Moroccan couscous. Couscous is nice. Rice. I tell you, the thing is, no, rice is bad for you. No, if you have the brown rice, it's no. not that bad. No. Everyone thinks that. I, I, I've never looked you. into that, but a lot of things they say is healthier is actually not. Yeah. They just fill it up with chemicals. And... Yeah, rice is terrible for you. Especially white rice. White rice will spike your insulin levels. <laughs> what the roof? Mm. So yeah, I mean I'm no. <laughs> Why am I talking about it being eating healthy? I'm the most unhealthy. I had two double cheeseburgers last night <laughs> with a chicken wrap. Right? Okay. 
from McDonald's, it cost me seven pounds. Seven pound? Yeah, that's crazy. Seven pound for that crap. Yeah, you and then if you, if you know, but if you wanted to buy something healthy, like you know what I mean, It'd like meat, steak. Twice as much. How much is a lump of steak now? Like, let's say that's healthy food, like just meat in general. Yeah, like raw. you could make steak and chips for that. You yeah, know, but I'm, that's what I'm. Ta- no, just you for couldn't. One yeah, you could. No, you couldn't. That's, that's, for one person, a yeah. fucking yeah. steak is like you a tenner. You can get a steak for a fiver. No, you can't. You can, I'll prove it. It'll be a quite small... It It'll doesn't matter. Shit That's a normal. <laughs> no, you, there's no excuses. No, you, you want to eat the You right can eat stuff. healthy. Noodles and prawns, that's my go-to. Noodles? Yeah. Oh, no. Noodles Bex, and you prawns. You can't be eating noodles. You can eat healthy as a, a good Pot price. Pot noodle? Oh. We got any in the back there? I've got to get some of them right. today. Yeah. I, I love think people don't really care about us talking about food. To be honest. No, uh, no, no. We're like, like, I don't know. know. We keep going, of course. Don't what we? about you. tools? Yeah, yeah, we're just yeah. talking about food. Get back on track. Yeah. Anyway, so like, um, you won the award. Yeah. You made a speech. Was you was you pissed when you made the speech? I was not prepared at all. So obviously, when I found out I was in the shortlist, the top five. Um, well, you like the way you, you so say on the shortlist. You short, how, how tall are you? <laughs> I am pretty short. <laughs> um, but yeah, there was five uh, five of us, so four other amazing women. Um, obviously, all do some do some pretty ballsy trades. Mm. So you've got a steel fixer, you've got a crane signaller in there. Oh, like, blimey, yeah. Mm. Those are some, you know. So there's um, a lady who's a three DMP. I think that's what it's what it is lead operator, which is basically you make prosthetic limbs. So that's something. And then you've got Jen, the decorator, mm-hmm. um, obviously very well known, successful business owner. So I was up against all of those, and I thought I do not stand a chance. Mm-hmm. I'm just glad I'll take it as a win, being in that shortlist final. I'm going to go to the night and have a, have a good time, meet some women, you know, get drunk and just enjoy enjoy mm. the night and the odd selection of food that they had there mm-hmm. like, um obviously when they called my name i was pretty drunk at that point i hadn't prepared a speech <laughs> they had emailed us all like um all all finalists shortlisters yeah. to prepare a speech acceptance speech and i thought there's no point at preparing a speech because i'm not going to win so no one's going to read it so what's the point so i didn't think you know to even think about doing you a underestimated yourself <laughs> When they called my name, I was so shocked. I was thinking, Jen, can I borrow oh, no. yours? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, shouldn't thinking, have, I shouldn't have drunk as much. Yeah, I was thinking, <laughs> one, I shouldn't have drunk so much. Two, maybe I should have prepared a speech. So I gave the most uh, drunk tradesperson speech ever. I went up and I was kind of like, I've never given a speech before. What do you do? It's like, thank you to all the men that have, uh, you know, mm. helped me in the industry and got to where I am. She mentioned the men. Yeah, I See? did. I mentioned the she men. She mentioned the men. Yeah, now that is a proper tradesperson yeah. right there. Yeah. And then uh, it was kind of like, um, for everyone in the shortlist, thank you very much. Um, I was shocked to even be up here. And for all the women that even entered, I think there was thousands of women mm. that were in there. So mm. to make that shortlist top five out of thousands is something in mm. itself. So I was happy enough with that. Um, so to win it was still shocks me now. I'm mm. like, well, I won that. Mm. Um and then um, I didn't know how to finish a speech, so I pretty much went, thank you, and <laughs> left the stage. <laughs> like, how do you wrap up a speech? Yeah. Everyone was going, she's pissed. <laughs> yeah, probably. She's pissed. She's yeah. been indulgent. What, what is your favourite tipple? Oh, cocktails. Cocktails. Yeah, cocktails. But there was loads of champagne, free champagne there, so uh, we all just drinking champagne wine yeah all sorts of alcohols i was drinking whatever was being brought to me <laughs> what's it uh, what's it called uh something iced tea what's it what was it called what cocktail oh yeah. long, long island, long island, island, island iced tea. tea yeah my mom my, my missus drinks loads of them she uh, gets in a right big old she does when she has a few of them you just don't know you drink a cocktail and you get oh uh, yeah about it's like whoa where, where, where did that come from yeah like after five and you're like on the deck <laughs> So now you full flow back into work. So it yeah. didn't take you, you got back to work quite quickly. That is like yeah. going some, Bex. I've got to say, <laughs> yeah. like what you've been through, do you know what I mean? You've, yeah, well you've gone through, through that. that yeah. You've had the mastectomy. You've gone through the sec, like of being told that, well, we're going to deliver and blah, blah, blah. But you've still cracked on. You've done your courses. You've won your award. And now you're back on the tools full mm. time. As yeah. back to it within a year <laughs> yeah. is mm. fucking incredible. Mm. And my hat goes off to you there, like, 
I tip my hat to you, um, there, Bex, because that's fucking going some. And that's determination, and that's yeah. keeping positive. You've kept positive through all that. I've taken it. You've been saying, you've been saying to yourself. You said to me before you got in, you went to the hospital. Yeah. When did you go? Yesterday? Or when uh, was it? it was Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Um, and obviously that's when uh, they gave me my uh, all clear, clear, full remission. So they said, oh, I'll just uh, go on the reconstruction list and I'll uh, have to wait now for a date. And then once I'm in, I'll get them big boobies back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to go bigger than before. <laughs> so the rule is the right. size that they take from you. So the size you were before, you can yeah. go up to that size. Right. Um, they don't really have people, you know, really small that then go in for reconstruction and get really big. They yeah. kind of, the rule is, the size you were before is the size you can go back to. Right. So I'm going to go so back. I, thought, I just thought it was like, you can't cut yeah. your dick yeah, off and then back. I, you can't <laughs> cut, cut. What? You can't what? cut. No, wait, let me talk. You can't cut your dick off and ask for a bigger one. <laughs> 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 what? I don't know, if you need your dick cut off for medical reasons. Why would I need my dick cut off? I was thinking so. You might have a medical reason. A medical reason? Then, what? what like that it's too cancer. small? What? Or dick candidate? Yeah, exists, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that is a thing. But it's normally testicular cancer. Yeah, I know. I don't think it is nah. it the tip of... I don't know. I mean, That's like... because she said you can't ask for bigger, oh, so I thought yeah, like, yeah, someone yeah. can just make an excuse, really. cut their dick <laughs> off and ask for a bigger one. I've got to go to the hospital, I'll get my dick cut off. Can I have a bigger <laughs> one? There was Bob, wasn't it, a few years ago, she cut her husband's dick off, didn't she? She was driving in the car, she threw it out the window. Like, cause like, and he ended up having reconstructive surgery. I think he even went into porn films after that, or something. Or he had a robot one. one, didn't he? I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah. But it was it was pretty mad. It only happens in America. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think he was a philanderer, and she cut it off mm. while he was asleep. Uh, imagine that waking up to seeing um, just the blood with no <laughs> dick. You'd be like, just ball bags. I'm now. Ah, oh, I'm sure when I went to sleep, that was there. Where is it? And it's down the A127 <laughs> somewhere because she's chucked it out the window. Do you know what I mean? There was a joke about that, right? There was a joke about, I don't know if I can tell it. Maybe I can't. <laughs> no, I'll leave it. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. Maybe it's a bit dated. This but... is not for jokes. Oh, all right then. All right then. Yeah, take me out of to you and all that. And you're getting it right back to the boobs, right? So you get new boobs, yeah. right? So, like... What does that entail? Is that is that when reconstructive? Do they take flesh from other parts of the body, or is it floor? Is it is it? It'll be all implant. All implant. Yeah. And what implant do they use there? Is it silicon or um, is it? They're using like a specialist sort of like high profile mixture mm. of saline and silicon. But right. yeah, they're gonna make it for me and uh, reconstruct section of nipple because. When they give you a mastectomy, it's literally full on chop, chop, mm. take everything out, yeah. and then they just leave you with some skin. So you lose the nipple. Yeah. So, but can they then? Can they do? Yeah, something? they make it for you. So you can have the yeah. nipple as well. So yeah. You're not, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So they get so, the, the full shebang back. Yeah. Yeah. I get everything. Like, shebang back. Yeah. Yeah. We can see these new <laughs> pictures coming out on yeah. social media very yeah. soon to show them off. Why I really, not? Why I not? really want to say something. But Go on, I say it. Come say it. So there'll be someone out there that'll be the first time that someone touches him. <laughs> oh, no, no. I was telling one. Oh, being single and dating. Touching oh, on that. Yeah. yeah. Go on. Go on. Yeah. Go on, go that, so yeah. obviously I've been single for... Oh, coming up mm. oh yeah for nearly five years now right. and uh obviously going through cancer on your own is pretty shit like the people that i know that have gone through cancer they've had a partner or someone supportive whereas i haven't had that and i said to mm. pete i said so it's a shame that i didn't meet somebody before i had cancer because then i could have like been like <laughs> yeah you know like you can't mm. leave me <laughs> yeah shame them <laughs> yeah, yeah. guilt yeah. me now if you leave me that's well out of order yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um Dating has been a disaster. I've got <laughs> some awful dating stories. Mm -hmm. um, do you, you want know to elaborate on them? Do you know these? Is that why you've Yeah, it he up? knows yeah. a few of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone's like... It's interesting. <laughs> All right, give us one. Whether then. or not you want it, you don't have to. Oh, so there was uh, the guy that raped my toe. 
that's uh, that's uh, <laughs> one that people were a bit shocked about it. And so it's he's got not a foot what you think. Then. It's not like in between the two toes. <laughs> <laughs> Your toes that. were spread wide. It, <laughs> it was literally, I, I fell asleep and uh, I woke up like half stirred. He was sucking my toe and wanking into my sock and I was a bit like... <laughs> it's just the first time you met him. <laughs> just after a few dates. Okay. And um, yeah, I had two options. Yeah. I either wake up and kick him in the face and go, what the F are you doing? Or I pretend to still be asleep which I did, and then wait for him to go uh, into my sock. <laughs> what was then your, what? left. Was your, was your sock on? No, he what? took my sock off. He took your sock put off? Put it on and was Did you ever see him again? Sock. Oh, my God. No. no that's called, see that's him called again. safe socks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, safe socks, he made a yeah. condom out of my sock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was it a sports sock? <laughs> <laughs> Train sock. Yes. Shut your well, socks too. Gutted. It was a proper winter sock, wasn't it? Piece <laughs> <laughs> of rugby sock. Look at you, big boy. Yeah. Oh my god, really? So, yeah. like, and you earn him. Like, yeah. Who would do that? Like, Especially while you're asleep. That's yeah, a bit, it, bit and, and I thought it was really weird, and I was like, yeah. That's was he hoping you was going to put it on and go, Ugh. Robbie's like, like I've that. done that. <laughs> 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 Robbie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "Was that me?" Uh, yeah. oh, <laughs> Robbie has it with tights on his head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, but no, but like then when you say like you know like you went on a couple of dates after you had your mastectomy as well, didn't yeah. You? And then, then people realised you said, "Yeah, didn't you? Do you know yeah." I mean? So I didn't really tell them that mm. I had had a mastectomy, mm. you know, because so they just seen photos of me as i looked before mm -hmm. and then as soon as it got to the oh you've you've had your boobs off they literally were not interested mm. in getting to know me or anything <laughs> well, like that just so you know when she gets them back you are not yeah. invited yeah. do you know yeah. what i mean you're not the first one to touch yeah, yeah. um so dating's hard it's hard in the industry like in construction any guy that you're with has to accept that you work with a lot of guys yeah. mm. and there's always that jealousy they think oh that would be amazing having a, a girlfriend who's in the trade and can go tool shopping with and all of this mm. but the reality is like they all get jealous they all mm. think mm. you know who's that messaging you at 9 9 p.m at yeah. night it's someone because they need to know what the key code safe is for mm. this plant room yeah, or yeah, for yeah. something or some something work related in like a mm. work group chat and then obviously having a lot of friends in the industry anyway and just like messaging my mates or you know having general chit chat and it just doesn't go well with guys um the guys in my area are also very odd I sent you that video of <laughs> the odd guys in my area, selection mm. of guys from a dating app. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're... Uh... Not, not a good choice. <laughs> not a good they're selection. They're a bit... Uh, I think they're all on the magic roundabout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that way. All going the wrong way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well... Yeah. Is it been a good one? I've yeah. enjoyed this today. Is there anything nice else you one. wanted to cover? Is there anything you want to say? Anything else? Um, there it is. Look. So a bag has just jumped onto the table. Out of nowhere. That is like what? So that is for your flue gas analyzer equipment, etc. So you turn up that. It looks very. Uh, looks nice, doesn't it? Mm. What's that on the front? The little one, the pouch. So it got your glasses in it, is it? I suppose you could put like a uh, pressure gauges, or you can kind of kit it out however I'd you want. I'd be like, be me sunglasses. You know, uh, right there. There's not very many. Uh, no one's ever done a bag up, open before. It up. Show us what you got in there. Come Do you on. wear a tool belt? No, I don't wear a tool belt. But I'm I'm one of these ones that have always just chucked my gas analyzer probe inside my tool yeah, bag yeah. because I've not wanted to carry the big briefcases that they actually That's come nice, with. That's nice, isn't it? So it obviously nice. leap probe in there. Um, you've got your printer and obviously your analyzer and you can carry a spare analyzer. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't clamps. mind one of them. I wouldn't mind one of them. But yeah, velocity bag. <laughs> you wouldn't mind anything. I wouldn't mind one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, That's so... Cool. Anton and Velocity of Yeah, for anyone up. that's on audio, you can't see the bag right now, but... Yeah. She's it's a lovely us, bag. It's got, uh, like, nice two pockets in the front. An for, analyzer bag. Yeah, and one big one for your probe and other bits and some side pockets and an inside mesh uh, pocket. Um, nice looking bag as well. I like the colour yeah. scheme. 
place to put receipts if you need to. Yeah, back. I'll just chug all my receipts like <laughs> on the <Yeah>. dashboard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and or on the roll floor. Paper. It was never there. <laughs> But there's plenty of space in here as well. But I, I rate it as a bag. Like, I will actually be carrying my analyzer mm. in this bag from yeah. now on instead of just throwing it on top of my tool bag. So no one wants to be carrying their tool bag and, like, a big briefcase yeah. or loads of other stuff. Like, this actually sticks onto my yeah. velocity mm. bag that I've already got as well. I mean, you think, right, like, I used to think when, like, servicing now, from what I know, from what I know back then, my, I remember my mate used to tell me, why don't you just do servicing? We've got to turn up with a little bag and that's it. And I used to think, well, yeah, that'd be good. But then, when I get into service, I think, well, it ain't actually, is it? You've got a no, lot more. Yeah. There's a lot more in servicing. So if you can make something that's more compact and get more stuff in it for the servicing, all well and good because you've got to take pump with you in here. You've got yeah. to take, you, you know, you might be taking a pressure washer or whatever with you now that people clean out the heat exchanges with, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's not a case of just turning up with that a few minimal tools. Servicing is quite evasive, isn't it? Really, yeah. and you have to have a lot of kit on you. So if you can make it and condense it for that, that's that's good, isn't it? I, I like that. You put that over your shoulder. Mm. Take you out your pump in or what else in. Nice. Nice little setup that. Like it. Thank you. It's been a nice conversation. Yeah. Oh, I've really enjoyed today. <laughs> nice I'm really to glad you. to come down. Well, I'm I've glad you before. Nice to meet you properly. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you're getting on. Mm. Yeah. yeah, well um, done for getting through yeah, everything. And, 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 and cracking on with it and being staying positive. And I think you really are an inspiration to mm. others out there. Who, like, listen... We don't all got it easy at times and we all look at our own lives and think, fucking hell, shit at the moment. But you could be faced, and this is like I said to the other week, we made a joke of it and going like, you know what I mean? If it, it, Some people will turn around and go, well, you might not have any legs. It's no good to say that to somebody. But when you do see somebody in your position who's just cracking on, you do think to yourself, well, hang on a minute, yeah. I ain't got it as difficult as some people, mm. do you know what I mean? So, like, hats off to you. Well done with the... Women in Construction Awards and uh, yeah, keep smashing it, Bex. Yeah, thank you. Keep smashing Cheers, it. thank you for coming. Thank in. you very yeah. much. No awkward handshakes. This no. Time. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. She. Uh, well, we won't go into that. <laughs> she. You <laughs> probably catch her doing it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Brilliant. All right. Lovely. Mm. Nice one, Bex. All right, this has been another episode of Off The Job Podcast. Thanks for watching the show on YouTube or listening on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts and all other streaming platforms. If it's your first time watching or not, make sure to subscribe below and follow us on all the big social media stuff like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. For our overtime show on Monday, send us in your stories and comments for it to be read out on the show. Send it in via email, direct message through our social media accounts or WhatsApp us on 07457 406259. And we'll see you on the next episode.